Oh yeah, let's get this party started. Let's get this party started. Hey, what's up everybody? <laughs> welcome one, welcome all. We're going to get this workshop going here in just a second. Welcome everybody. We're doing an awesome monthly workshop. This is going to be so fun. A subject that Son and I have been chatting about for quite some time and just feels like the perfect time to do it. It's fall. It's not quite the same as spring cleaning, but I think the fall, everybody slows down a little bit. You get a chance to reflect a little bit. And I think this is a good topic for, for the holiday season and, and that sort of reflection. Everybody, uh, welcome. Welcome, welcome. We're going to get this going in just a minute. Just going to give people a few minutes to hop in and join us live. But... Let's go ahead and if you're here, where you're from, let us know where you're from. Let us know, have you been to one of our workshops before? Drop it in the chat. Nashville, awesome. Hey, Bobby. Hello from Ireland. We got folks from Ireland, New Yorker living in Los Hey, Maya, how's it going? Oh, cool. Minnesota former 6FS. Let's go. Hey, Cookville. Yeah, I know Cookville. Awesome. Hey, friends. In Sedona. Got folks in Sedona. I lived in Arizona for eight years myself. Uh, not close to Sedona, but did go to Sedona a couple of times. And uh, Sedona is an amazing place for sure. Richmond, Virginia. Never been to one of our workshops. Welcome. We're going to get this going in just a minute. Want to give everybody an opportunity Napa. to... Tune in live hey, if they want to tune in live. Welcome one, welcome awesome. all. Awesome. Hey, Greg. Nice to see you. Been to Phoenix one represent. Workshop. Awesome. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. All right. Well, let's uh, give another minute, I think, here. What is one thing that you, when you saw that we were offering this workshop, about it never being too late in music. What's one thing that kind of intrigued you about that? Let's drop it into the chat. Why are you here? I guess is the question I'm asking. I found out it's true. There's still, still hope. hope. Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> It's pretty funny. I was in the studio last night and uh, was singing a pop vocal. And, we, we, you know, there's the thing that's so great nowadays is I don't have to take it personally when we're having like frank discussions about, oh, it might be a cool idea to bring in another singer to do because it's like for a very youthful pop song. And it's like, I'm 47 years old. I don't need to like be singing the lead vocal on this thing. Uh, but we'll see how it turns out. You know, sometimes it doesn't really matter, but yeah, it's, no, it's, uh, it's just one of those things where sing it, but we'll see how it turns out. We'll see how it turns out. You know, it might, it might be good. might not. And uh, you know, it's just, it's uh, but, but it's that whole, I'm old. It's just so it's such a good thing now that I can have like a sense of humor about it. It's not a big deal. Uh, and ultimately, you know, I find, and we're, we're going to get into this some more that just, if you embrace when you're getting older, how that works in the context of a team, it can be like a humorous moment. It can be something that really challenges you to like do what's best for the song, which is ultimately the best thing to do anyways. So, um, but yeah, I think, I think the gang's all here. I, I think we've got a, we I got mean, a full I think house one of the here. most, uh, welcome everybody. I think what one of the most important pieces here that you guys are saying, and people have mentioned, you know, in the DMS of inviting people, reminding people we're doing this call, we're having this discussion, we're having this conversation is that we can, we have these voices inside of our head that sometimes say, Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not young enough, or that's only for young people, or I'm starting at 52. Like, where can I go? I saw that in the chat there. And today we are here to have the dis discussion, bring people in who are finding success and creating so much amazing music and to remind you really that your music matters and there's ways to share it. You can have a life, you can have a family, you can get older, you can enjoy being older. You don't have to pretend that you're younger and really like take ownership of your role and your career. And I think it's a conversation that 
we do not hear enough. And that is why we're so excited about bringing this conversation here with everybody and to look around and see like your fellow music makers. We're all here having this conversation. There's so much success that is happening in this group as well. People are getting their songs signed. People are getting placements. People are touring. People are producing. Like it's a phenomenal group in here of people that are going after their dreams, creating their dreams and taking ownership. And so uh, we just want to start that conversation off by knowing that and looking to your right and left in these boxes and feeling feeling seen and less alone on this journey. And that little voice that comes in and says, well, maybe I'm too old. You can be like, mm, you can shut up now. Look around. You've got proof here that you're not. So um, let's dive into some of the content about halfway through, we're going to bring in, yeah, pipes are well seasoned, right? And like, we can just roll with the punches in a different way. Um, we're going to bring in some awesome music creators about halfway through this uh, conversation to hear their stories, to hear their takes. So you don't have to just take our word for it. Um, and we want to hear from you too. Thanks for posting uh, in the chat. Thanks for being a part of this conversation and showing up today because it matters to all of us. Yeah. And just want to do a couple of, uh, we'll do a couple of little, you know, housekeeping things. First off for anybody who doesn't know who we are, just going to give a quick intro oh, right. here. I'm John Kleinbell. This is Sonnet Simmons. We founded Two Indie, which is our company in 2021 to serve artists, songwriters, and producers. It's our mission to create a friendlier music industry for indie music makers and to get you real results in your career. We offer premium conferences, courses, and coaching, as well as a private sync club called the Sync Society. The Sync Society sampler consistently lands between 60 to 100% of its songs to sync rep deals, a testament to the caliber of indie creators who are members of this exclusive club. And in 2024, earlier this year, we released the Amazon charting book, Get Signed in Sync, which is the ultimate handbook for working with music licensing agencies. And just a quick reminder that this entire presentation is sponsored by the Sync Society. Of all the ways that indie music makers can start to monetize their music and skills, Sync is still one of the best ways to have a breakthrough. Our private Sync Club, the Sync Society, offers members one place that they can meet the industry, collaborate, write to briefs, submit to samplers, and access a library of hundreds of hours of video coaching, song feedback, conferences, and more. It's where Sync is friendly and deals are made. Join the club and get signed in Sync. I'm going to drop the link in there for anybody who is curious about that. And let's get with it. Let's uh, let's get rolling here into this. There's never been one of the things that we really do believe that there's never been a better time to be over 35 in the music industry because so many of the barriers have been removed. And it's a thing where we realized through our own experiences that we didn't miss our shot at finding fulfillment and our own form of success in the music industry. And we're going to talk to you about that, but that's why it's really what encouraged this idea for this workshop. We felt like there's probably a lot of people that can relate to that. Who here can relate to the concept that have you ever been told that, that, you know, maybe your voice sounds too old or uh, there's so many forms in which this kind of negativity and, and this kind of context that's not helpful for musicians that are getting older, have you ever gotten feedback that kind of reflects that you're getting older or is there just something inside of you that's, for me, the longest time it was like, oh, my career is old. I, I got to work a desk job. There's no way it's going to work. I'm like well over 35. Would love to hear like anything. I felt that, that way at 25. Yeah. 25. Crazy, I was right? like, oh, I missed, I missed it. Like too old. And it, hundred percent a different kind of industry at this point than it was then my vibrato is too old yeah been told all of that definitely my own monkey mind agree sonnet felt that way at 35 women stop wanting to date musicians after you turn 30 <laughs> <laughs> i haven't found that to be the case but but i uh, I, I think there, there is there is something to that yeah <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Mary says, nah, uh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Attitude from younger collaborators. Sure. There, there's so many forms in which this can take place. And, you know, we're not, we're not here to be like, oh, woe is, woe is us in terms of like, you know, we're getting older in the music industry and, and, and therefore we become like kind of victims to that 
that very fact. And it, but it's one of those things that I, I just know in my own experience, I can say that, wow, I hit a point where I was working a job. I realized I kind of gave up on music altogether. And it wasn't until I hit a wall and realized I really wasn't doing what I was put on this earth to do. And I was well over 35 years old. And, and I just made the realize I had to make, I, I made the realization I had to make a switch. Um, so for me, all of these indications, you know, I, I did the whole like trying out for American Idol, trying out, I actually got very far in uh, America's Got Talent. I met the executive producers of the show, did like four or five auditions one day that didn't go anywhere. You know, all these different things that you do on showcasing all the time in Los Angeles, producing albums, playing shows. And I even got signed to an indie record deal and none of it really went anywhere. And it could have been so easy for me to just kind of fall back and slip. I've always been a good worker. You know, it could have been so easy for me to just slip into, okay, I'm just going to be a professional for the rest of my life in a field that has nothing to do with music. And I'm so glad that I didn't. And I think part of that for me anyways, the real catalyst was just this, I really had to do what it was I was put on this earth to do. And I think if you're here at this call with us, there's probably some of that in what you're bringing to the table right now that, that, that for whatever reason, it hasn't been realized in the way that you would have liked to have seen it realized at this point in your career. But I'm here to tell you that very cool things are possible well after the age of 35. And it was a big mindset shift for me when I realized it doesn't matter how old I am. I can't live with the fact that I'm not doing something cool in the music industry. So, you know, for me, that's like, that's my part of setting the table in this conversation. And I'd love to hear Sonnet's take on this because we, we both have our own experiences with this. I mean, I think it's in the chat. There's so many people who can relate to this conversation. Obviously at 25, I thought my career was over and because not just because, because I thought so, but because that's what I was told. It was like, oh, you need to be under 21 to compete for this thing. And I was like, oh, I'm 25, shoot. And then um, at 32, I was on, or 33, I was on the uh, ABC reality singing show. And I was one of the oldest people on the show. And it was wow. like a thing, you know, there were people that had kids though. So I wasn't that old. But then I started having children. And now I feel like, you know, as, and that's why we're having this conversation. When I first became a mom, I was like, oh, like how my career is over. Like I have to pretend I'm not a mom. You can't be a mom and be a, like a, an artist. You can't be that that's, that's not allowed in this industry. And then you start vocally sharing it and you say, you start taking a stand for it. You start taking up space and say, yeah, I am a mom and I am an artist and I am like, I stand for this and I stand for that. And I want to make, be a good role model to my children and what is possible. And what we start to do is change the conversation and we start to change the industry. And now there are groups groups that are moms in music. And there are groups that are celebrating and advocating for there to be space for people who are not just 23 and under. Um, and, and, and it's all fine if you're 23, but I think that there's something to be really, there's some, some wisdom to own that space, to, to really take stock of what you bring to the table and you're not trying to be 23. And I think that was the biggest thing where it's like, let them be 23 and let me take up the space I'm supposed to take up. Let me be the artist I'm supposed to be and let me really own that and, and put away that voice that says, oh, but you're not, you're not young enough to, to be an artist, to release music, to share in that way. Um, and the more that we really take up that space and we have these conversations, and if you look around this room, like I keep coming back to this community and in Sync Society, it's very, very obvious that people have they have careers outside of music. They have they have families, they have these lives and music is that one driving force that has kept them clear, has kept them driven, their North Star. And they're creating music now that is getting signed, that is getting in place, that are getting placements, that is meaningful while they're still able to pick their kid up at 2 p.m., while they're still able to not live in a major city and do the hustle and grind. And that's what this conversation is about. It's about, we've all been called to music and just because you're over 35 doesn't mean that you don't you don't get to continue really showing up for that. And we find we get to change that conversation with the community. We get to change that conversation by having people surround you that are also over 35 and making shit happen, like real things happen. And it doesn't mean you have to be, you know, the next 
you know, touring artist that's going to sell out stadiums everywhere. It means like, what is the success for you? Um, I love Doug. You're like 35 times two. Absolutely. And you're getting placements, right? Like, exactly. Like their what? age is just a number and it doesn't really. And for so long in this industry, which thankfully it's changing. I also was told like, you need to lose weight. You need to be this, you need to be that. Like, it's not a conversation in the industry anymore. Like, look how many ways we have changed the industry. You can look different. You can be from all over and you can be a lot of different ages in Latin America. I think it was two years ago, a 96 or 86 year old won a won the Grammy for best new artist. Um, I believe it was Bex New Artist. Uh, so like things are changing. The conversation is changing and we're in that space where like we have to really let those other voices that have been limiting us that I hear grumblings of uh, between the different people in our groups, like we can let that conversation go, like let those voices go and show them a new paradigm, which is really where we're at. We are here building a new paradigm together. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the, the things that everything that Sonnet said there in terms of like how the music industry is changing, it's always going to change. And the thing is, the fact of the matter is a lot of barriers have been broken down in terms of the traditional, you need to be under 25 in order to have something cool happen in your music career. As the music industry has evolved, we're here right now to help you find meaning and purpose in it on your terms. You know, the whole point of this workshop is to give you mindset stuff to give you confidence and hopefully everybody feels like the camaraderie, like just this chat is going off and I'm just feeling so good being a part of this like being a part of the crowd that's over 35, it's just, I never thought that would be something that I would be so proud of, but it's, it's true. You know? <laughs> it's just, it's, it's where I am in my life. And I think a big, one of the things that we're going to talk about is because I think this is a, a thing is just age is always seen as like this negative thing. But one of the things we're really going to be hammering home to everybody here is that there are serious advantages to being over 35. We're not only going to be talking about it, just what we're, our experiences are with this, but we're also going to be, like Sonnet said, we're going to be bringing in some amazing music makers that we love uh, that are going to share their perspectives on all this too. So who's excited about this? Who wants some strategies to help this make make this happen? Uh, and also who who's excited to be over 35 and making music, you know, <laughs> so showing excited. up, showing and, uh, up. What I love what you just said was also just bringing back the point of like, on your terms. And I heard somebody I saw in the chat, like chasing something. And in this conversation, like, let's reframe the chasing something that is outside of us and creating a career and sharing music on our terms. What do you want it to look like? How, how much, how can it fit into the life that, that you already have? And that really supports the wisdom that you bring to the table. And I really loved that you, um, that, that, but of course, like, chasing our dreams is always important, but as if it was not out there, but it's already here at the table and we just have to take our seat and create our terms. Let's dive in. Let's dive in with this. I've created this cool little handout. Let me see if I can get it out to everybody. I'm going to drop this into the chat for everybody. It's a little helpful handout that we've created uh, to act as a, you know, piece of, um, supplemental materials for what we're doing. And this is something that you'll be able to keep with you. You can even print it out if you like, if it helps you to re remember this stuff uh, or you can just keep a, a digital copy of it. But here, I'm going to drop it into the chat right now. Feel free to download it and we can you can kind of follow along with some of the main points that we want to make today. So we're going to talk about, and I'm going to go ahead and share this as well. Uh, might as well, right? Let's go ahead and uh, get this shared on the screen. And we can kind of start to dive in on this. All right. So we're talking about the advantages of being 35 and up in the music industry. Uh, the first thing that, and this was cool. It was really cool thinking about this because it was, it was brainstorming my own experience and Sonnet's experience with this. And we were really trying to figure out like, what are the main three things that are just obvious to us, most obvious to us. You all might have some really crazy cool insights on this as well, and we're going to dive into that as well. But the first thing that really hit home to me was that how, you know, I just remember when I was younger, uh, I just used to get ripped off. 
You know, it's just, it's like, yeah. I was so naive. I was so naive. And this is like, it's not a sob story. I promise you, like, obviously I'm doing okay in the music industry now, but I had a, a quite a few times. I was really naive, really green under the ears when I moved to Los Angeles and had a couple of producers who have like the, you know, the whole typical story. You have a producer that has connection with this artist that you admire. They've got like the fancy hardware up on the wall and you're just like paying them whatever they ask in order to work with them because you feel like it's going to give you a chance at something. And it's so funny looking back at all those situations, you know, probably there's like a, a, a half a dozen of them in different forms, like marketing people, producers, uh, so on and so forth, who really like honestly ripped me off. And it's like I could look back and say, you know, F those people, you know, how dare they, um, you know. But the thing is, like. I've now been in the music industry for over 20 years and that's experience. Like I'm not, it's, it's like you fool me once shame on them fool you once, twice shame on you. It's a certain, it was shit, but like fool me like five or six times. Finally, I got the memo, but like, you know, the thing is like, I'm, I, I wasn't born yesterday is, is the best way to put it. And, and in that way, it's like, I'm, I'm, in that way, bringing experience to the table, business savvy, you know, I'm, I'm avoiding rookie mistakes. And I think that's one thing that we all as music makers over 35 years of age really bring is that we're, we've got a whole experience of making music stories to share, as well as like the ups and the downs with it. So that's like the first thing right out the gate that we were thinking is like, you know, it's a real advantage that I think people don't really, they take it for granted sometimes. Yeah. And to add to that, I think, um, you know, when you're younger, you think you need to do it all. You need to be everywhere. You need to go everywhere. You need to know everybody. You need to be doing it all and run yourself ragged. And I think uh, with age, with time, with clarity, you start making decisions that what works for me, what works, what supports the life I want, what supports the family I want to create, what supports the other things that I want to do and how, how can it look different rather than just spinning wheels. And I mean, at least for me, I used to try to do it all. Like I need to do this and I need to do that. And the voice inside my head was not kind. She just was like, keep on going, keep on going. And uh, now we can say, yeah, that doesn't work for me. Or I, I don't have time for that one right now. Like my bandwidth, this is my bandwidth that I have. And, um, and or it's gonna, it's gonna take me two weeks to get you that, like, you know, really owning where you're at, or I can get you that tomorrow. But what keeping that, um, that integrity. And I think that comes with age and knowing and experience. Totally. Yeah. And so experience is an incredibly valuable asset for us. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is just, uh, you know, I could look back and say, oh, you know, there were some people that would come out to my shows. There were some people that were supportive of my music back in the day. But I think, you know, I look, I just, the other day, I just for fun, I don't know if anybody ever does this, but every once in a while, I'll just look through, because you don't contact every, you don't reach out to everybody all the time that's in your phone. But I just went through and I saw like, well, how many people do I know in the music industry? Like if I texted them about like something that I was doing, how many of these people would actually respond back? And I was actually floored by how many people were in my phone, how many connections I've made over, especially over the last like seven or eight years. Um, your network as you age, it gets bigger. It really does. It gets bigger, uh, especially if you show up and, and try to be a part of a community, which I put a lot of active effort into. Um, but even if you haven't up until this point, I'm sure that you have, in a way, a larger support network for what it is that you do musically. So that can be a real asset. Your fans from past eras, your friends of today, you know, they all, to a certain extent, might know what you're doing in the music industry right now and might be able to help you succeed right now. So that's that's the second point that we wanted to make is that you likely, as an older music musician, have a bigger network. True. Yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> true that, true that. All right. Well, and then then the last point we wanted to make here, and we're gonna we're gonna open. Obviously, if if there are things that you're realizing in your older age in terms of advantages of being thirty five and up, feel free to drop them into the chat. We can have a little discussion with this. We're gonna bring in, like Sonnet was saying earlier, we're gonna bring in some awesome musicians who are over thirty five who are in love with the what what they have in their creative life nowadays. Um, 
But yeah, the final point we want to make before we start this amazing panel is that when you're over 35, you tend to have better business skills. And when we're talking about business skills, we're talking about you, you tend to have more financial stability. You tend to have some, you may not be an entrepreneur, but you are aware of entrepreneurial tools like scheduling, using a calendar, um, <laughs> tracking your expenses. You know, I remember it actually brings yes, me back. It's true. It's it true. So long ago, but like I just remember, like, you know, when I was in my 20s, like, I, I didn't even keep like this is back when you had like a so, some people were still like keeping a checkbook and like writing down manually like where their balance was <laughs> like I wasn't doing any of that shit like I, I mean I was just so flying by the seat of my pants with everything and then you know I had a couple of times I, I think like a lot of hopefully I'm not the only one here who's who had a couple of times where I'm like oh shoot I don't know if I'm going to make my rent or I I literally had to call the landlord because I realized I was overdrawn um so you know there's going to be I look back at those times and it's like that was pretty wild that was pretty wild but now I have better business skills I have better acumen with all this stuff I've actually set goals for myself. I remember back then too, I was like, yeah, I want to be on like the, you know, the Hollywood bowl stage and all, all these wild big things, but never actually like setting in a, a, a practical plan to see any of it through to, to completion. So, you know, that's the thing It's like we, as we age, we acquire skills that can make us good in the music business of it, which as we all know, relationships, the business of music is so important when it comes to actually pushing the needle and moving it forward. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think also with scheduling, with being able to say yes, with that, with being able to say no, with really being mindful of what works and what doesn't, um, all of those are business skills. The way that you show up for a session, the way you're prepared, the way that you, you know, I think about the opportunities that I was given where I just wasn't prepared or I just had my own idea of how it should go. And I mean, I had a really amazing opportunity once and um, I decided that it was my job to tell the head music person um, what was the right thing in this moment. And I didn't get the job because you don't, you just, you know, if I was older and had a little bit more wisdom, I would have known don't try to tell him how to do his jobs on it. Um, but if I, you know, like I missed out on a really big opportunity and uh, it was a big lesson learned, you know, let people, let everybody do their jobs, stay in my lane. And we, we learn those things. We learn how to conduct ourselves um, with time, with age and with experience. So all of those things bring to the table. And I think with all three of these, what happens is you create better music and you create it more effectively and more efficiently. Um, and that's one of the bigger, the biggest things here is like you have vision and you have the tools to get you where you need to go and you have a network and you have the ability to really create the music that you're wanting to create in a timely way that is not just like oh we'll see how we can piece this together sort of thing um yeah I wrote with a trace was dropping in that I've studied production and was recently told some of the best producers are in their sixties and seventies. I would believe yeah. that I was yeah. writing last night with a guy who's like in his sixties and he was incredible like I mean, a very, very accomplished guy, but um, yeah, it's just that there's no, you know, when it comes to that kind of stuff, it's, it, it can be one of those things where it really the experience, the way it all comes together can be magic. And then Brian was ma making this good point, you know, statistically, most entrepreneurs don't see success until their forties. Uh, and I think that rings true in so many cases in terms of just all of these pieces not quite being together in the way that they need to be together for us to find success, especially we're all here to talk about this in the context of the music industry. Uh, obviously, it applies to other fields as well. But, you know, this is just I'm I'm really excited about, you know, this conversation we're having. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy, you know, we, we didn't know how this was going to go, but it feels like this is something that everybody kind of relates to. Can you drop in the chat? Let me know if this is something that you're relating to, something that you're finding helpful. Is there maybe something that you're like, oh, I never really thought about it that way. Sweet. 100% yes, helpful. 
you know, the skills and in in, in as far as like the strategies, that's one thing. There's obviously a mindset and a, and a belief thing. And hopefully we're addressing a little bit of both with what we're doing today. Uh, I think one thing that is undoubtedly going to happen here when we bring in our amazing guests that are going to be hopping up here on stage with us in a minute is you're going to get utterly inspired. You're going yeah. to feel, you're going to see their story in your life. And uh, if you haven't heard of a piece of your life in our stories so far, I've no doubt that you're going to hear some amazing insights from our amazing guests that we're going to bring up. Sana, would you like to introduce who we're bringing up on stage as I bring them up on stage? Yes. We are bringing in Maya Coppola. Woo -woo. We're bringing in Cinder Shine. Let me see who else was. Hi. Making sure I have everybody. Um, Leave Mary, Mary Haller's Mary here. Mary Haller and yeah. Awesome. Is there anybody yeah, uh, we're, we're missing? missing? Those we are the people everybody? that I got yeses from in the chat. But if I'm okay, missing great. somebody. Just Drop it in the chat if, uh, if if we had a conversation with you. I, th I think we got everybody. I think the gang's all here. I uh, just wanted to say it's great to see all your amazing, smiling, beautiful faces. And um, yeah, why don't we kick this conversation off with just a simple question, you know, and that simple question is uh, like to, to just get because I did write a couple of questions down is like, you know, as far as this goes, how have you improved as a music maker over the years? I know it's a kind of a vague question. It could be your music skills or your your business acumen or or any of the aspects that we've talked about before. But I'd love to hear from each of you just a little bit about like how how much you've improved over the years. Um, I'll start. Hi, awesome. Yeah, Hi. Maya. <laughs> um, well, I was actually going to type this into the uh, chat box, but a way that I feel I've improved is I approach being an artist and making music now as a businesswoman, <laughs> as opposed to 34 years ago when I started, I was like an artist and everything was like, I'm selling out if I do this and I won't <laughs> do sync. I wasn't doing sync 34 years ago because who was doing that? I'm an artist. I make songs for art's sake. And now I am not stupid and I make <laughs> art for, I, I don't have to prove that I'm an artist anymore. Yeah, yeah. Now I want to make some money doing it and there's literally nothing wrong with that. So I'm like every stream, every single revenue stream I could think of that I could make money making music, that's what I do. And, you know, and... And I enjoy it too. And and I enjoy applying skills as a songwriter and separating that from just having divine inspiration come through and have that happen. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, it's fun. It's really fun. So well articulated. I love that. Thank you. Mm. I Who'd think like that's to go a next? very relatable thing there that you've shared. Absolutely. Who wants to share next? Go, Mary. Uh, you're unmuted. Go. Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> hi, just, Mary. Hi. Hi, I'm Mary. So grateful to be here, and I'll just start by saying I am learning every single day. So I feel like a newbie every day when I wake up, and I love that. And I think I just embrace that. Um, I think the older I get, I, you know, I really try to work smart, not hard, and I'm learning more and more how to do that. I thought, John, that handout that you put up was like perfect, because those are kind of like the three arenas that I feel have helped me, or, you know, that I can see um, being advantages of being um, over 35. And in terms of, you know, learning, I'm really new at this. I didn't start songwriting until I was 40 freaking years old. And I didn't start getting to sync until COVID. So, you know, I am learning every day. And there's a lot of days when I wish I would have started earlier, <laughs> not just because the sync fees were better <laughs> 10 years ago, but um, but yeah, just to get that jump start. But I think I've always been a little bit of a late bloomer. Um, but I, I kind of figured out quickly when I started doing the Nashville thing and, and writing for other artists, I think the first conference I went to 
someone got up and might have been Brian White and said, your age is your asset. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. And I think that's really true, especially from a songwriter standpoint. Um, see, I'm not a front facing artist, so I haven't had that challenge that you, John and Sonnet have had of like being over the hill or feeling like you're over the hill when you're 25 or 30. As a songwriter, you know, we're kind of this anonymous voice. <laughs> that no one sees our face. No one can tell how old we are, hopefully. Um, and I've tried to surround myself with youth and energy and I like new music. So I feel like I've never been accused of feeling being dated in my writing. I don't think <laughs> too much because I, I have a 22 year old daughter too, who helps keep me current. But um, yeah, I mean, I think, I don't can't remember what, what your question was, but the, the advantage for me is definitely kind of what Maya was saying to being a better business person and the financial stability that, that you mentioned um, is for real. And this is like my third career. You know, I had a career in arts administration and the jobs I had involved being on both sides of the desk in terms of pitching. So I had to, I was like being a journalist or being an editor and I was pitching stories to writers and editors. And I was also an editor for an art section of a newspaper and I had people pitching stories to me. So I got to sit both on both sides of the desk and that really helped me in Nashville when I got signed in my 50s to a publisher in Nashville. Yes, it can happen. Not even being in Nashville um, and kind of understanding like how to be of service to someone because I've been in that position of having people pitch stuff to me. Um, so I kind of understood, you know, interestingly, like I don't come to you asking what you can do for me. You know, I ask, you know, what, how can I help you and how can we be this in a, in a team together? And I think that that thinking that I got in my previous career in, you know, in the business side of music and the administrative side of the music is really helping in sync now too, because I can, you know, speak to a music a sync agent or music supervisor and kind of get a sense of, at least I like to think I can, or I'm trying to be part of a team and not have that, you know, what can you do for me? But I'm, we're, we're in this together and how can we both serve the picture? How can we both serve the song together? And so a lot of it, I think is the mindset for me that having previous careers and other experience um, has been really helpful in the, the business that is so important in sync. I just the, that whole switch from what can I get out of this to how can I be a service that it just really, it, it, it exudes maturity. It exudes the, the things that happen as, as you age. And it's it, certainly a mindset that has shifted within me. And so I, I just so related to what you talked about there, especially when it came to that. And, you know, it's just really encouraging, you know, to hear that, you know, it's possible to get a pub deal in your fifties, or uh, it's possible to at a later stage in life to try something bold, try something creative, try something that maybe you just thought it was something you would do for fun your whole life. And then all of a sudden here you are, you're, you're making music that's just consistently excellent and people are noticing it. And it's, mm. you're, you're a, you're a player in uh. the sync industry. Now you are plugged in, you are doing it and uh, really proud of you for, for everything that's the, the, the growth that Sonnet and I have seen in the short amount of time that we've gotten to know you. Uh, it's been amazing to watch and just so glad you're up here to, to share this wisdom with everybody. Thank you. And you both. And this organization has been a big, big part of my growth and my connection and connectivity. So thank you. So, um, oh, Mary, I love you so much. <laughs> uh, and um, I think one of to answer your question directly, John, and it doesn't mean I don't love y'all, but just, uh, you know, uh, Mary and I have been connected in a really special way, again, through John and Sonnet. And she's like the, um, for me, she's sort of my shining light. And um, I hope my internet isn't messing up. But my biggest improvement, I think for me, and I've been doing this for, I guess, four or five years, is trusting my ears because I have no theory. I came, I was an entrepreneur for 35 years, but I came into this music business for other reasons and jumped in. I'm kind of a jump in kind of girl, but um, I, I, when I learned to trust my ears, that's when my value 
went up. And trust my wisdom and my experience and what I bring to a room, and I'll be 65 in next month. Um, what I bring to a room is what everybody calls me cinder shine, right? I bring that to whatever I'm working on. So, you know, people want to work with me because I make it easy. And I know enough to know when I need help or when when it, the song is better for somebody else to sing or when I could just add some vocals to it or whatever. But I think the most thing is trusting my ears. I'm like, yeah, I don't know how you're going to make that happen, Mr. Producer, but that should does not sound right to me. Let's figure that out. <laughs> yeah, so trusting, trusting my ears yourself. and trusting my voice. Yeah. I love that there's a trusting of ourselves. We're not looking outside of ourselves for somebody else to say, ah, oh, I can make you famous. This is the way the song needs to go. Trust me. And instead you are like, well, this is what I hear. This is, this is, I can trust myself, the vision that I have and my ears and really uh, one for you being your ears, but other people, whatever it might be, there's a trust of what it is that they want of their talent for their vision um, and I think that is a common theme here with all of this panel of really coming into your knowing and who like your artistry and owning that and then always learning and collaborating and growing. We're always all doing that. Um, and I think another thing here that I'm hearing is like these voices in our heads that could have stopped people, could have stopped us <clears throat> as so many people here on the chat of I'm too old or like, well, what if I don't, I don't know the answer. I don't, I don't know how to do that. The only young people know how to do that, or I'm too old to learn how to do that. That conversation, uh, those voices, like they're not getting in the way. You guys aren't subscribing to that. You've, you've subscribed to a different paradigm, to a different possibility. And the success that you're having is just a sign of you. You don't let that stop you. Don't, doesn't, you don't get off the train wish I'd done it younger, didn't, well, I guess it's too late for me. Like you guys are, you guys have so much success. You guys just shared your stories, but not even all the freaking successes that you're having right now that you continue to have that I keep seeing on Facebook. Um, you guys want to just do a little bit of a brag session. I'd love to hear what's new. What's what, what, what can we um, applaud you for right now? Cause you guys are, you know, three very busy uh, music creators in the world. Maya, you're in the middle of something fun. Well, um, well, I'm actually in the middle of something fun and and a little silly, but mostly fun. And um, and if I win, I I plan to do some really great things with it. But um, so I'm in this contest for being fabulous over forty, which is like you know, I mean. It is what it is. Like, I don't really feel like I need validation for aging because, you know, it's just something we're doing, um, you know, but it is nice to be seen. It is nice to have women champion each other uh, and men champion women that aren't 20, <laughs> you know, and it's just, um, and honestly, the prize is huge. You know, it's very substantial, put it that way. And um, if I win, I'm going to start a songwriter's camp and an artist camp, multimedia artist camp, like down the road, but initially songwriters, because my whole community is songwriters. And, you know, and I just, it's a dream I've always had about, um, just getting artists of different media to collaborate with each other you know, a writer, not a songwriter, with a fine artist, with a songwriter, with a photographer, with a thinker, with a chef, all in a room, go create something. That's my plan. I so love it. I win, that's what I'm doing with it. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, so other than that, like, I, I have to say it started with 6FS and all of the people that I became close to in that and you and John and um you know just the community that you created just kind of fostered such empowerment in in me because I do struggle I'll, I'll be honest like I am a performer I was you know I was signed to Atlantic I've had huge publishing deals I had a 
highfalutin major manager. And, um, and then I had my kid, which was also a choice. And, um, and then I don't know, I developed like really severe stage fright. And I don't know if that was aging. I don't know if it was like the absence of narcissism. I no longer cared if anyone thought I was hot or wanted to, you know, be in love with me as I was performing on the stage. It was just coming from a more genuine place. And uh, so now I actually am very much struggling with that. Like I, I do it, but I like throw up before I go on stage. I keep telling myself I suck. I hate my voice. I do it. I just literally the negative voices go on and on and on. But then I get up on stage. Like I got up on stage with you at Durango and it was a piece of cake, but I was like, Phew. When that was over, I just felt like the world lifted off my shoulders. But anyway, I need to work through that. But, you know, I'm getting songs signed like crazy. Thanks to you guys, your monthly sampler. I, you know, I just got signed to Pink Shark. Last month it was Madden Flow. You know, so like, I'm sorry if I'm dropping names, but no, I'm, that's I'm good. Sorry. Fine. And Find they love secret. us. They are now on the lookout for songs from Two Indie. Like they are, they're like, "Ooh, what's the new Two Indie sampler?" And you know, we built that. We built that. You helped us build that by teaching us. And you know, um, that really I get emotional. Sorry, I get very emotional all the time. <laughs> it's like a safe space for that. It's uh, it's beautiful. But, you know, um, you know, it's just. Yeah, I mean, just like songs sign like crazy. Love Avengers has a new song coming out. We have our whole dynamic that's amazing. And, um, and you know, and it's led to writing songs with younger people, which is also good for older people and younger people to write together. Um, and yeah, it's just, you know, and there's some other things too, but, you know, that's it. Oh, <laughs> there, but... What's uh, going on there? Okay, I think I think we got it figured out. <laughs> um, that's it. So yeah, sorry. No, no, that that, no, I mean, that was sorry. great. Thanks for sharing your what's going on with your music career and and all the cool things that are happening. I'd love to go around. Let's go around. Uh, Mary, would you like to to share? Oh man, Maya, that is crazy. That's amazing. I'm like blown away hearing all the stuff you've got going on. Um, I am just continuing to learn and feed the sink beast, um, which takes a lot of admin time, it seems like. Um, I was just in a great um, kind of conference in Nashville last week where I saw John and got to write with Mo and another artist and reconnect with some of my Nashville people and I love seeing that there's more and more people in sync in Nashville that gives me an excuse to yeah. go down there and reconnect um reconnect with some of the art the younger artists I'm working with who also reminded me too about another benefit of kind of being older is the mentoring that comes with it mm -hmm. uh, and she's this young woman she's 19 going on 20 she's just like amazing moved to Nashville a couple of years ago and she's now got her face on the you know front of magazines and um, headlining cool shows and touring all over and getting the team together and she reminded me because I totally forgot and she's like Mary you're the one who I emailed like 10 years ago and you helped get me connected in Nashville and it just remind I, I'd totally forgotten that and now I'm like fangirling all over you know her and you know kind of following her and and um, uh, we've written together a little bit but um, but just that that mentoring, I love being a mentor to young artists who mm. are doing cool things and hope I can do some more of that. Um, so yeah, just kind of feeding the beast. I just got my my last ASCAP statement made me teary eyed because I there, were, there was more income than I've made in the last 20 years, you know thanks to the young and the wrestlers. <laughs> Thank you CBS. And that just like, blew me away that you know at the age I'm at now that I can finally like start to see not that I'm doing it for money but but that was like kind of mind-blowing mm. after like counting pennies like oh now we're counting dollars you know it's not like great but it was like it was you know the little the bar graphs where you do the quarters it was like bro just because <laughs> of those placements that started a few months ago and um 
So that's been really gratifying for me, but I don't put all my eggs in one basket. So yeah, just continuing, you know, it's been like two hours this morning, you know, responding to a urgent brief that I know people in this community got and like going through my old country catalog just to remind myself like what's pitchable. And so I'm trying to dig back because some of the stuff I wrote, you know, 15 years ago kind of sounds like 90s country now. So I'm like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> it used to sound so current. So it's just so interesting. interesting to kind of be able to view that stuff like, oh, I guess that could be kind of 90s now. So yeah, I'm just kind of enjoying the journey. And it's frustrating too, as you guys all know, it's like, man, this is not easy. It's not, it's not easy, but I feel gratitude um, to be there. I just, yeah, I feel really grateful and I'm kind of constantly reminded how blessed I, I am to, to be able, I get to do this. So, so yeah, just kind of doing the same thing, learning every day. Amazing. Having some success and for every success, a hundred rejections. So, yeah. Well, I just love both of what you've shared. Um, before we hop into Cinder, just there's so much honesty in both Maya, Mary, I'm sure Cinder, you're going to share, but I just wanted to highlight that and applaud that and the vulnerability of the honesty of like, it's not that it's just all roses, you get to 35. And you're like, I got this now I can just like believe in this new paradigm. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take over the world with my music. It's like, it's still you're still showing up for it. You're still working through things. You're still, you know, battling different things that are coming up for you uh, with the voices in your head or the different obstacles that you have to figure out or the next thing you want to learn or well, let me figure out how to get in touch with that person. And there's always, you know, it's not, it's not that it's just easy. It's just that we get to all help each other and create this paradigm where we're not tearing each other down, but in, or, and, or feeling like we're in competition with each other, but instead finding support and solutions within the community. Um, and I, I love to hear these success stories and I love to hear the vulnerability and honesty too. Okay, Cinder, okay. go ahead. First, I just want to um, say Mary and that, that whole young and restless thing, like some of us had an avenue and we were young and restlessing, but that avenue wasn't right for Mary and she found her own freaking avenue to the young and the restless. So anyway, yeah, it, isn't it funny to get um, ASCAP money? You know, it shows up in your bank and you're like, woohoo. Uh, so um, for me, uh, so in, the, in Manusha, the song that got on the sampler for me, uh, I don't even know what month it is, but I guess September um, was a collaboration and it needed to be Gen Z-ish. You guys, I had to look up on my phone, what is Gen Z? And John is always saying shit <laughs> in his initials. I curse a little. Um, I had to look up, what does LFG mean, you know? I had to look it up. So anyway, that's what our phones are for, old people looking shit up. But so we, I made this song, right? It was Gen Z, we knew we needed Gen Z uh, vocalist. But the wisdom, you know, that I brought, anyway, so it's a great song. It got on a sampler. It got signed right away. And now two more people want it. And we, we know to look for, I mean, that's about being in a relationship also. I'm like, wait, guys, does, do we get that? Because the same, I saw that same brief, Mary, but it was from two different agencies. Mm -hmm. And so... I don't want that song to be repped by two those same agencies because they're getting the same briefs, right? So, you know, to give the song, I call them like they're horses. They're out of the starting gate once they get repped and they're on the racetrack and they go around, you know? So anyway, um, that is, so that's what little, little bits of success looks like and placements come in and you stay the course and it's, been told a million times this is not a sprint it's a marathon but I also want to say that right now my attention is on doing physical things because right now the cancer I have is in the box I've got my bones I'm riding my motorcycle I don't know if you guys can see this but uh no. yeah that's me on the racetrack and um and that's what I'm doing but I still have people and projects and songs it's just i'm not dived in completely but i'm still in 
and I'm still doing back end and I'm still so that's a beautiful thing about also being older is like Sonnet was saying, no, what's your yes and what's your no and where are you putting your energy and what's next? Love it. Music industry on your terms. Put on that That's helmet and get about. out on the track. Yeah, I love it. While I'm you're so on the racetrack. <laughs> I know. And so, I just want to tell you guys too, I got the most outstanding student chip, um, which they don't they don't give these out hardly at all. And I got it from course control. Uh, he never gives them out. But and um, I wanted the black flag like that says you made a bad pass. We, and I got black flag to come in and get this chip. So I still am not making bad passes, but um, right. I got the chip. Congratulations. Congratulations on that. And congratulations to everybody up here on your ongoing participation in the music industry, all the awesome things that just seem to be a part of your life now and in, in a part of what it is that you do every day. And I mean, I feel just so much more connected with what I'm doing here in the music industry, hearing what you have to say about it. But one thing that I did before we, cause we do have to wrap this panel up, but I wanted to give an opportunity for each one of you to maybe give like 30 seconds. Like what's your, what's your piece, one piece of encouragement. If you could give encouragement to anybody here who's tuning in, who's an older music maker and maybe they're feeling a little stuck in some kind of way. I would just like to go first on this because um, you will find what you're looking for. So if you don't feel wise, then I'll take this today, look for that. So whatever it is you're looking for, you will find. So whatever little piece of inspiration you found for today, look for that. Look for the improvement, you will find the improvements. I love, I love that. You're here. Mary? Um, I just, I don't know. I just keep coming back to gratitude. Lately, when I go to bed, I count 10 things on my fingers that I'm grateful for. Mm -hmm. Just something that day. It could be something really little, but I feel like that helps me set me up, hopefully, for a good night's sleep, which isn't always mm -hmm. as easy as you go, <laughs> but also for a good day the next the next day. And just, you know, being appreciative of just little, little things. And I also just wanted to say, John and Sonnet, I feel like you are great examples of lifetime learning. And you have just been, you know, I've just seen you as I've known you for the last few years of spreading out your talents and your gifts in different arenas. And John, how you're like reinventing yourself now as an artist. I mean, you are an example of what, you know, we're talking about of, and, you know, Sonnet, all the cool things you do online to support other moms and it's just, it's really made an impression on me. Um, and you do it in just kind of this easy, careful, not careful, but easy, free, beautiful way that is inspiring to me. So thank you. Wow. Thank you for that reflection. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm going to piggyback off of what Cinder said um, real quick. And what you seek is seeking you without a hundred percent it you can call it law of attraction call it whatever you want but if you're out there seeking it with intention it's there looking for you too and um with that my little bit of advice is just show up show up mm -hmm. show up for yourself show up and you know showing up doesn't mean being the best it doesn't mean any of that it just means get the, get out there do it try fall <laughs> falling is fine too <laughs> and just go for it you know keep going and keep trying and and you know allow yourself that grace and you guys are amazing and i love you i just feel very grateful for the day you showed up in my life thanks awesome. what great you. advice and these are things that it's like easy to say, but when you catch yourself in those moments of starting to pull back or starting to li listen to the voices in your head, keeping you from taking the action that you really want to take or showing up wh when you have community, which is, you know, part of why John and I have created to Indie and Sync Society. It's because that community keeps you accountable to yourself. It keeps you showing up in service to other people. And so when you're in that kind of space, you keep you keep showing up. You 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 see other people showing up. You're inspired to show up. Um, and what you're seeking, you know, like what you both said with Cinder, 
I saw somebody comment, like, I'm not there yet. When am I going to be there? Like, when is that, when is that going to show up for me? And it's like, you're here on this call. So you've been looking for it. Here we are. We're here in this call together to remind each other. This is a new paradigm that we can, that we are creating together. Um, that's what it is like in sync society for so many of you who are already in sync society. Also quickly, I dropped a chat. I just made this little, um, this little Calendly right now while we were talking, because I figured some of you guys might want to hop on a little discovery call with John and I, with John or myself. If you're not in Sync Society and you're feeling like, oh my gosh, this community is somewhere I want to be, I could really use that sort of support. And you're not sure if, uh, if Sync Society is the right place for you, you can book a little 10 minute call with us, ask us your questions. We're happy to hop on a call. Um, otherwise, you know, you can email us or whatever. Um, but yes, I just feel like community is everything. It reminds us that there's a place for you. It, you find your people to collaborate with, you connect to a bigger network outside of just yourself. And in a world where we can live anywhere in the entire world, it's important to have that community. And I so appreciate you, Mary, Cinder, Maya, you guys, thank you for showing up. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for getting thank on you. Zoom and being so vulnerable um, publicly. Uh, it's inspiring. And I really love each of you so much and to witness your journey. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this workshop. Hope you got a lot out of it. I dropped the handout in the chat again we'll be sending a follow-up with it with the replay for anybody who's catching this on the replay glad you got to catch it and we're glad that you're here and follow us up uh follow up with us uh to schedule that 10 minute uh discovery call with us we'd love to chat with you about the sync society if you're like what is this and and you know maybe this is a match for me um but yeah you know I, other than that, I, I, as far as like closing words has been great. I, I feel like I feel so seen and heard with everybody here. Just the reflections that I'm getting back from everybody here who's over 35 and making music and making cool stuff happen and, and showing up for their dreams. It's just very encouraging to me. I, I, I have no doubt I'm going to have a fantastic rest of my day because of oh, it. Oh, yeah. So thank you, Let's everybody. Let's all go and rock the day. Let's Quincy do it, everybody. Jones. Quincy Jones says he does Coco and YOLO, which is keep on keeping on and you only live once. So thank you so much, everybody, the whole community. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. All right.